Hey, Sean. Uh, quick question before we start. Is today the day I do my speech? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do any of you guys want to trade with me? I'll buy you breakfast. What? No? All right, fine, I'll do my speech. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think about every time I have to do my speech. How can I get out of it? <laughs> That's a good one. I wait till the night before to start preparing for my speech because I love the pressure of, de of a deadline. I remember Mr. Midday's first thing he taught us, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. That's all I learned from public speaking. Seriously, I truly enjoyed the class and the people in it. You made this quarter one to remember. During my speech, I will talk to you about my past speeches, my humor, and my critique on my speeches. I pride myself on doing things out of the norm. I don't like being like everyone else. So I would like to play a game with you guys. I'll read you a couple lines from my speeches and I'll see if you guys remember. Question one. An eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. Speech three. Which, which time? Oh. <laughs> second or third time. Second, second or third time. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. You may not know this, in high school I was a troublemaker. That day I wasn't. I raised my hand in class before oh someone else raised it. Significant person. Mom. Right, mom. About my mom. Right. <laughs> Question three. Four hundred dollars. Why is my bill four hundred dollars? Alright, speech two. Alright, that ate about six minutes up. Alright, two more minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> Another speech I want to talk to you about again is about a Gandhi. I knew about Gandhi before I did my research, but I really know about him now. He truly knew how to live. He wanted to help everyone he could. He looked at the good in people. He would like to read. A, I would like to read a couple lines, a couple quotes from him. A man is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. The moment there is suspicion about a person's motives, everything does become tainted. I look onto the good qualities of men. Not being faultless myself, I will presume to probe into the faults of others. All compromise is based on give and take, but there can be no give and take on fundamentals. Any compromise on, on mere fundamentals is surrender, for it is all give and no take. Another speech I will talk about is from speech four, why you should hire me. I like to show people I'm willing to do things that other people are not. I had, I had a lot of good bosses, some good, some bad. The ones I liked were the ones that were willing to help you when you had in your time of need. I busted my butt for them. I would help them even when it wasn't my job to do it. It's easy to sit on the sidelines and bark orders. People to do the task, but they won't do it to the best of their ability if you don't show them that you'll do the same. And one of my live speeches I talked to you guys about earlier was when I went to the convention. I noticed since I've been in public speaking class, I noticed things that I normally wouldn't. I noticed all the ums and how nervous she was and if she decided to pace around or not pace around. And she looked real confident when she was doing the power, PowerPoint. But when it came to question time, I noticed that she started getting nervous. I noticed she started going to her shell. I noticed all the ums that started to happen. It made me think about myself. Even when you do practice, when you actually get into live speech and you're actually speaking out loud, you clearly can't prepare for the ums. Next I'll talk to you about my humor. I'm, a very, sarca I'm very sarcastic. I blame, what, I blame whatever member, family members around me at the time when I'm sarcastic. So my son is in kindergarten. The new year started. When the new year started, he had to start going to school all day. So one day he came home and told me he wanted to be a full-time son. All I could do was laugh. I looked at him and said, every job has advancement. So you could be a full-time son until you're 18. When you turn 18, you will advance into hungry and homeless son. <laughs> you get great perks. You can stay up as long as you want and do what you want. He looked at me and said calmly, so do I still get toys? <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. Another funny thing that happened with my, with my son is he came downstairs when I was watching TV. He had a shoebox full of toys. He told me he was going to California. I said, all right. I said, how are you planning on getting there? Oh, the bus. I said, all right. Well, what money do you have? He had this big smile on his face. He reached into his shoebox. He pulled out one wrinkled $1 bill. <laughs> all I could do was laugh at him. Last I'll talk to you about my critiques on my speeches. Every day when I did my speech, I would read Mr. Vendetti's rubrics. It normally said, work on scanning the audience, and uh, you didn't do it. <laughs> you know, it says, tap, I tapped on the table. I don't remember doing this. Does he have me confused with somebody else? 
So when I finally watched my recorders, I noticed how nervous I was. I noticed how long I noticed the longer I spoke, the more comfortable I got. I guess this initial start of the speech that messes me up. I noticed my gestures got bigger and bigger with each speech. I noticed that my eye contact was very poor. I would look at the audience about every 10 seconds, but nothing more than that. So I noticed that I actually did about one and a half public speaking classes this quarter. I did 10 speeches and four impromptus. So I think I should get extra credit for that. I don't? <laughs> All right. I was, I was surprised about things that I did that I didn't notice I did at the time. All these rules were accurate, so I hope you learned a little more about me. In this portfolio speech, I talked to you about my past speeches, a little bit about my humor, and a critique I did on my speeches. Remember when you were writing your rubrics, I'm an ex-cable guy, I will find where you live and turn the cable off. <laughs> I didn't make time, it's not good.